Hello, so today we're going to be talking about uh, monopolistic competition. Monopolistic competition is a market structure in which the barriers of entry are low. You have many companies that compete by selling similar but not identical products, which means that the products are differentiated. Uh, the demand curve for this type of firm is going to be relatively elastic. Um, now, let's take a look at how that would look. If you're following this um, in a class, normally the professor will cover it by, by starting it with something like a perfectly competitive market. So this is a, a bit of a refresh right now. So in a perfectly competitive market, one of the things that you have is that your price level is equal to your marginal revenue, which is equal to your demand line. And that's because this is a perfectly elastic line. So this line is perfectly elastic. Now, this is for what we call perfect competition or a perfectly competitive model. So, perfect competition. All right, now for a monopolistically competitive model or for monopolistic competition, what we have instead is we have a sort of downward sloping line that is relatively elastic and that will be your demand line and then because prices change depending on the quantity that you produce then in a monopolistically competitive model what you're going to notice is that your marginal revenue line will lie slightly below that And this is what a monopolistically competitive model looks like. So this is monopolistic competition. So again, the line is still elastic. It's just not perfectly elastic like it is in perfect competition. Now the best example in this particular um, industry is the retail industry where they faced um, they have a differentiated product. In other words, if you go to a Nike store, it's different than if you go to a Payless shoe store or a, a Walmart. And if you buy shoes that are sort of higher brand name, then um, they are different than if you buy shoes that are sort of a, let's call it less uh, brand name or less recognized. Because these firms can affect prices even slightly, the marginal revenue line, it's going to be below its demand line. Um, so the marginal revenue line is no longer going to be tied with the um, demand line. Instead, it's going to lie below. And that's going to change a little bit the way we do profit maximization. So let's get into uh, profit maximization. Now, in order to do profit maximization in a monopolistically competitive model, so we have our demand line here, we have our marginal revenue line here. This is our price level, and this is our quantity level. So in order to do uh, in order to do profit maximization here, we're going to have to draw our cost curve as well. So our marginal cost curve is here, and let's come up with a let's say an average total cost curve that does this. Okay, so this is our average total cost. Now we're still going to follow the profit maximizing rule as, of, um, as at this point you should be able to remember this. So the profit maximizing rule 
is we're basically going to find the point where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. And that's going to be the quantity that we're going to be producing. So we're going to find that marginal revenue equals marginal cost point, which is right here. And then straight down from that point, we're going to find our profit maximizing quantity. So we're going to be producing at this quantity to maximize our profits. Now, if you remember from a supply and demand model, the demand line is the one that gives you a quantity demanded and price point. So once you as a company have selected this supply position, you have to ask your demand line how much people are willing to pay. So you take this quantity level and then you go up towards the demand line. And when you touch the demand line, you will go left from there. And that's where you find your profit maximizing price. When you touch the average total cost line and you go straight left from there, that's when you find your average total cost at this particular profit maximizing quantity. Now, in order to find your total revenue, to find your profit, we have to do total revenue minus total cost. Now we're going to be able to find our total revenue by doing the price times the profit maximizing quantity. And we're going to be able to find our total cost by doing our price, sorry, our ATC or cost per unit times our profit maximizing quantity. So we're going to take our price level, whatever it is here. And then we're going to multiply that times our quantity to find our total revenue. To find our total cost, we're going to find, we're going to pick whatever numbers here at ATC. We're going to multiply it times this quantity, profit maximizing quantity. And then once you find your total revenue and your total cost, you subtract total revenue from total cost to find your profit. And that's how you do profit maximization. Now, let me show you the three basic ways in which this model can look. So um, companies in this particular market can be making a profit or making a loss or breaking even. So let me show you the uh, three basic graph next to each other. All right, so we got our price level, quantity, Price level, quantity. Okay, in here we're gonna do a company with a profit. In this one, we're going to do a company that is at a break even point when they maximize profits. And then in this one, we're going to do a company with a loss which means that they are going to be producing at a loss minimizing point. Okay, so we have our demand line and our marginal revenue line. Our demand line and our marginal revenue line. And we have our demand line and our marginal revenue line. Make sure I label these. So I got my demand. I have my marginal revenue. I have my demand, my marginal revenue. And I have my demand and my marginal revenue. All right, so now we got to draw our cost structure. So this is our marginal cost. 
This is our marginal cost, and this is our marginal cost. All right, we're going to have our, um, in this one, we're going to show with the profit. So we got to put our average total cost kind of like there. All right, this one, we're going to do a break even. So make sure the numbers match. So we're going to be there producing. So our ATC line is going to touch that demand line in only one point. And then in here to have a loss, we got to create an average total cost line that is much higher than that demand line. All right, now to find profit maximization, again, we're going to go to a Marcos MC. That's our profit maximizing rule. Then straight down from there, you're going to find your profit maximizing quantity. Then if you go up from there, we're going to touch our demand line. And the demand line is going to tell us how much we're going to be charging at that profit maximizing quantity. Then we come over here to the average total cost line. And left from there, we're going to find our average total cost at the profit maximizing quantity. Now in this particular, when, when a company is breaking even, what we're going to notice is that at this profit maximizing quantity, my price is the same as my ATC. In other words, my price per unit is the same as my cost per unit, and therefore I'm breaking even. I'm neither losing money nor making money. Notice that here my price level is higher than ATC. And then over here, when I go to a Marcos MC and I find my profit maximizing quantity, I have to travel to my demand line straight up to find my price level. But then I got to continue to touch ATC and then that's where I find my cost per unit. Now notice that in this case, the ATC is higher than the price level at Q star. So in this case, you're going to have a loss when you calculate your total revenue minus total cost. If you look at this right here, you're going to notice that the price and the ATC are exactly in the same place. So you're going to break even there. And notice that in this one, if you look at your price and ATC, the price is higher than ATC. Therefore, you're going to have a profit in this case. So this is what the graph looks like with the loss. This is what the graph looks like if you're breaking even. And this is what the graph looks like if you have a profit. Now, what happens in the long run in this particular market? So to understand that, let's go back to the, um, the characteristics. So notice that in this market, the barriers of entry are low, which basically means that other companies can come in and take market share away from particular individuals. So in the long run, one of the things that's going to happen is that companies that can are going to come in and competition is going to develop. So imagine that this is uh, company A right now, and company A sells a product that is pretty successful. So they have their demand and marginal revenue line. Now, if your product is successful, one of the things that's going to happen is at some point, somebody is going to want to join. And that's kind of like what happens in the long run. So in the long run, what's going to happen is company B is going to come into the market. Company C is going to come into the market. Company E is going to try to come into the market. So all of these companies are going to add pressure and they're going to steal market share from the company that's already in the market. 
stealing market share is the same thing as saying that the demand line for this company A is going to shift to the left. And so will the marginal revenue line. So marginal revenue on demand will be shifting left as companies join the market and they steal market share from company A. Now, as they're stealing market share, let me draw a new line for this. After these companies have joined, then company A is going to have to reassess their production point by following the same profit maximization. So demand line move to the left, and let's call this demand V2. Let's call this marginal revenue two. Now our cost structure for simplicity purposes, let's assume that it hasn't changed. So we have our marginal cost here, and we have, um, let's say that this is my ATC over here. Now notice that on demand one and marginal revenue one, when we were looking for a profit maximization, we were here. If you go straight down from there, you find your quantity of production. Let's call this quantity Q1. And then my price level will be up here. So we'll call this P1, and then my cost was here. So let's call this ATC1. All right, but when my demand line shifts to the left and my marginal revenue shifts to the left, due to the fact that I have all this entry of other companies into the market, then I have to reassess my production point by following the same profit maximization behavior as before. So this is going to be my new production point because this is where my new marginal revenue line is and this is my old marginal cost line. So as other companies are joining the market, I basically have no choice but to produce less. And now notice that when I go up and I touch my demand line, my price level is going to be here. Let's call it P2. And then my cost level is going to be here at ATC. And notice that in this particular case, I go from having a profit to heavy competition and therefore having a loss. So before my price was higher than my ATC and therefore I had a profit. And with my demand line shifting left due to competition, my ATC is now higher than my price and therefore I have a loss. And that's the basic process of competition using this particular model of monopolistic competition. Now if you uh, talk about the sort of break-even future in this market, so every time companies lose money they're gonna go out of business eventually and um, one of the conversations that we've had before is where is the shutdown point? So companies are going to continue to produce as long as they don't hit the shutdown point. And remember the shutdown point was related So if I have my average variable cost line here, I have my average total cost line. So the price level, I'm gonna be producing along this marginal cost line. And when my price level drops below ATC, I start having a loss. But then I can continue to operate at a loss because I can borrow money. But then once my price level reaches this point here, then I basically have to shut down. And this is what we call the shutdown point. All 
right? So at the shutdown point, I'm basically gonna quit doing business. Now what happens if you fast forward this sort of model into the future is that all the companies that are not cost efficient or have high cost of production would eventually have to shut down and then leaving space for the companies that do have more cost efficiencies, which will stay in business. As a consequence of that, in the long run, we're gonna find ourselves in this sort of equilibrium where companies are always, um, are basically breaking even. And this break even point here is where we find ourselves in the long run. So this break even point is also known as the long run equilibrium for this market. So this is the long run equilibrium position because all the companies that have losses will eventually go away. All the companies with profits will stay in, but every time there's a profit, another company will come in. So their profits will get smaller and smaller and smaller over time. And then what you see that's left in the long run is basically lots and lots of companies that are basically just breaking even or barely making any profit. All right, now what's so special about this particular market versus uh, say a perfectly competitive market? Well, the biggest one is really product differentiation. And that's what we have seen in the last uh, few years, that are, uh, companies are spending a lot of money on marketing. Um, marketing is basically all the activities necessary for a company to sell a particular product, which could start with the idea of a product and development of the product, how do you present it, uh, creating a campaign that is successful over time, and then, of course, managing your brand as time goes by. Advertising successfully is one of the ways in which your company can get better over time. And you can do a lot of advertising and promotion. Uh, these are just some examples of brands that we have noticed that have been extremely successful over time. And um, defending your brand name is another thing that you have to do constantly because plenty of companies uh, have issues and um, especially with trademarks and copyright, uh, things of that sort. So lots and lots of companies have issues with other companies all the time and they have to defend their own uh, brand name regularly. Now, how do you create a success and profitability towards the future? Well, there are many different ways to do this, but in a very basic way, you need to create larger product differentiation. In other words, you have to create this sort of set of customers that will always come back to you because they like your product. You need to maintain lower average costs, especially uh, labor costs, because labor costs is what the ABC line represents mostly. And the ABC line is the one that tells you where the shutdown point is. So a company with higher labor costs will have a higher ABC line and therefore go bankrupt faster. A company with a lower labor costs, we have a lower positioning ABC line and therefore can uh, sustain themselves through negative business cycles for a longer period of time and then their shutdown point will be lower. Now market success as we all know depends on several things you know when do you start your business um, if you look at the example of the COVID-19 2020 recession, for example, at the beginning of the year, everything looked great, but towards the month of March, it was obvious that the economy was about to go into a recession. Um, is it a good thing today to be the first company? The problem with being the first company in general is that the first company has to spend a lot of money on research and development. And a lot of the time, spending money on research and development is a good thing, but a lot of the times it also means that your cost of production are really high because you have to spend all this money on research and development before you put the product out there. A lot of the times today, it's really better to be the first second company. And the first second company, what they basically do most of the time is they sort of take the product 
that the companies uh, the first ones kind of come out and then they basically come in and they duplicate in a fairly similar way the product but tweak it so that it's slightly different and they don't break any sort of rules so first second companies today seem to be as successful if not more successful than companies that um, are the first um, I, one of the examples that i always like to use is Kodak. Um, to my understanding, Kodak was the one that invented the digital camera. And a few years ago, they had to declare bankruptcy because they were not able to capitalize on the digital camera um, growth. Um, now you have a digital camera absolutely everywhere. In, you know, phones have two digital cameras, uh, one in front, a couple in the back. Uh, computers have digital cameras. So, um, Kodak, even though they were the inventor of digital cameras, have not been able to capitalize on the success of that product. Um, and that concludes my presentation on monopolistic competition. Have a good one.